The kingdom of heaven and the kingdom that is this world, they are both drastically different. We find in this world that those who will be citizens of the kingdom of heaven, that they are undervalued, that they are unappreciated, that they are often overlooked as well. But again, in God's kingdom, those who are underappreciated in this world, they are blessed and they are highly favored. We'll see this in our lesson today as our lesson it opens there in the second and in the third verse with Jesus sitting on the mountain teaching to the disciples about those who are blessed and will be citizens within the kingdom of heaven. We'll see there that the first to inhabit the kingdom of heaven, the first citizens, those that are blessed, Jesus tells us, are those who are poor in spirit. Now, let's be very clear about this. Let's be very clear that by poor, Jesus was not speaking about those that may be physically poor or those that may be financially poor. Jesus, we should understand that he was speaking spiritually. That's why he says poor in spirit. Those who are poor in spirit are those who are lacking in spiritual nourishment, those who are lacking in righteousness. Well, the world overlooks the poor and doesn't help the poor, that doesn't uplift the poor in God's kingdom, Jesus tells us that the poor will be blessed, that they will be made happy, that they will be made content in their soul. Then in the fourth verse, Jesus, he introduces us to the next citizens that will make up the kingdom of heaven. Jesus tells us there that those that mourn, that they will be the next citizens within the kingdom of heaven. The ones that mourn are those that grieve because of their afflictions, their infirmities, the heavy weight of sin that they always bear on their shoulders. As many of us know, the world is unable to provide anything that can mend a wounded, that can mend a broken spirit. It can provide temporary happiness, but at the end of the day, the world cannot provide anything to provide true happiness, true contentment for the soul. However, the Lord, he is able to help our souls because of two different reasons. The first reason is because God is love and in his love, there is comfort. In his love, there is uplifting. The Lord, he is able to provide the nourishment that our soul needs to be mended. The second reason why God is able to help us is because God, he is eternal. His love, it is eternal. The mending that our soul needs, again, the fix for it will be eternal. Whereas the world, all of the world is temporary. And so the world can only provide a temporary fix. Whereas God, he is eternal and he knows how to mend a wounded and broken spirit so that it is mended forever and evermore. Now, in the fifth verse, along those same lines, we are told that the next citizen that will be of the kingdom of heaven are those that are meek. Now, the meek are those that endure injury. They endure affliction. They endure it with patience and without resentment. They are of submissive. They are of obedient faith. In the world, the meek, they are often overlooked. They are looked down on and they are taken advantage of as well because they may appear to be weak. However, I, I tell you today that patience, that is a virtue. Being able to endure what you are going through in life, that is a virtue. When you are able to live in, when you are able to accept the will of God, the world may look down on you and say that you are weak, but I tell you that that is a virtue and that is a virtue that will be rewarded by the Lord. Now, we're told that the reward of those that are able to endure to those that are meek, will be to inherit the earth. Now, to be specific about the earth there in the fifth verse, the earth is not speaking about our planet. It is a reference to the land. 
So the meek, they have been promised to inherit the land of the kingdom of heaven. In the next verse, Jesus then tells us that those who hunger, those who thirst for righteousness, that they are blessed, that they will be filled. They are again the next citizens of the kingdom of heaven. The world, it barely cares for those who thirst, those who starve for physical food and who thirst for water of this world. Nonetheless, those who crave to be holy and those who crave to be righteous, the world could not care less. But again, I tell you that the kingdom of heaven is different. The kingdom of heaven is different because of God. God, he is highly concerned for those that hunger. He is highly concerned for those that thirst for righteousness. Again, I tell you today, your soul, it is starving. It is thirsty. It is starving and it is thirsting for holiness and righteousness, the things that can only be provided by God. If you truly desire that nourishment, if you truly desire it in your heart today, don't turn to the world. The world cannot feed your soul. I tell you, if you truly desire it, turn to God and God, he will feed your soul to the field. Your soul, it will be full for not a temporary moment, but for again, all of eternity. And when you eat from the food of God, you'll eat the holy and righteous food and you yourself, you will become what you eat. You will be holy and righteous. Now, the next citizens of the kingdom of heaven, we are told there in the seventh through the ninth verse are the merciful, the pure in heart, and the peacemakers. Now, we would say that these are the people that do good in a world where good is certainly needed. Now, sadly, in our world, those that do good, they aren't appreciated. They aren't appreciated until they're actually gone, if they are even appreciated then at that time. That's truly a sad statement, isn't it? Even more sad is this. I grew up being told that good people, that they go to heaven. However, according to sound doctrine, I want you to listen to this clearly. It actually takes more than being a good person to go to heaven. I want you to understand it takes faith to be able to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now we see this shared with us in the third chapter of John's gospel in the 16th verse. In John's gospel, Jesus, he tells Nicodemus that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. I want you to understand today, it takes faith. It takes faith for one to go to heaven, not simply works. In his letter to the Ephesians, Paul wrote that by grace we are saved through faith in Christ and not of ourselves nor our works. This is very important information for you to know. Now, why is this so important for you? Well, it's important because there are many people who live in our world today who are actually simple folks. They are good people. They do good in the world. But while they are doing good, they are absent of faith in the Lord. And this absence of faith in the only begotten Son of God will keep them away from being able to inherit the kingdom of heaven. And to me, that's truly something that is sad. To do good in the world, and the world is not going to reward you, but then to do good in the world and be absent of faith and not receive the heavenly, the eternal reward by the Lord. That is truly sad. So I would encourage all of you who may be peacemakers, those who may be doing good in our world today, I encourage you find the Lord so that you can truly do good and be rewarded by the Lord with a heavenly promise. Now, faith in the Lord, as you have heard me say on several occasions, it's not easy. Faith in the Lord, it comes with persecution. And we see there in the 10th, the 11th and the 12th verse that Jesus, he touches on those who are persecuted. Now, to be clear, I want you to understand, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Our great adversary is the devil and his army. Jesus, he tells us, however, there in the 11th verse, that we will be reviled, that we will be spoken against, 
evil will be spoken against us falsely by the people living in this world. So this persecution, again, it can be incredibly hard. It can be incredibly tough. It can be incredibly difficult for many of us to bear. But again, I want you to understand today, we should not worry. In fact, I want you to know today that we are blessed. We are best when we are persecuted for speaking the name of Jesus. Our blessing, it is a heavenly reward that Jesus has given to us. So regardless of whatever it is that you may be going through, I encourage you be steadfast in your faith in the Lord. Don't waver from the faith because again, faith, that is the key for us being able to inherit the kingdom of heaven. Be steadfast in your faith, regardless of what others may say, regardless of what you may be going through in your afflictions, dealing with all of your burdens. Again, remain faithful, trust in, lean on, depend on the Lord, and God will continue to lift you up over this world and all of the obstacles, the hurdles that the world can throw you away. Now we'll see Jesus he even touches on that note there in the 13th verse, where Jesus, he tells us that we are the salt of the earth. We cannot let the world water down. We cannot let the world take away our faith. We again, we are the salt of the earth. And because we are the salt of the earth because of our faith, we must go strong. We cannot lose our flavor. Now on that same note, in the next few verses there, Jesus tells us that as he was a light in the world, we too, we are to also be lights in the world. Our light, it should shine like the light of a city sat on the hill. Our light shines through, guess what? Our faith. It shines through our ministering, our sharing of the good news our testimony. We are a living testimony of the Lord. When we testify of God through our works, through our ministering of the good news, we are again, bearing good fruit in our world. This is, I want you to understand, this is the work of God. So we see here today in the Beatitudes of Jesus from the Sermon on the Mount that heaven it is all inclusive. Anybody can go to heaven if they genuinely believe in the only begotten son. What's even more special about the heavenly kingdom is those who are overlooked in this world, those who go unappreciated in this world. The Lord says in many words that we are actually blessed, that we are highly favored. Again, we are blessed and highly favored through our faith in his only begotten son. Again, those who are poor in spirit, God uplifts. Those who thirst, those who hunger for righteousness, God will give them to their feel in their soul. Again, those who are doing good in the world, but they are doing good through the love of God. The Lord says that they too will be rewarded. And if you are persecuted, if you are hated by the world, because again, you are of faith, you're testifying of the Lord, Jesus tells us again that we will be rewarded by the Lord, that all of us, we are blessed. We will be happy. We will be content in our souls, not temporarily, but for all of eternity, because our reward is a heavenly home within the kingdom of God. So again, I encourage all of you today, if you desire for your home to be made in heaven, be of faith in the Lord. And when you are of faith in the Lord, God, he will reward 